Hello, in this video I'm going to be unboxing and giving my thoughts on my new Gibson SJ200 Studio. The first thing I do whenever I get a new guitar is put some brand new strings on it. When I play it for the first time I really want it to sound as good as possible so that I bond with the guitar quickly. While the strings were off I also took the opportunity to polish the frets as well as moisturise the fretboard. I got myself a tin of this Monte Presso guitar wax. It's basically fretboard conditioner which also has some dye in it that darkens the colour of the fretboard. The walnut fretboard on this guitar was quite dry when it arrived and the colour was quite light and I really like a dark fretboard on a guitar so I used this relic wax to make it a bit darker which really helped. I'm recording this little insert about two weeks after finishing this video. After living with it for a bit I still didn't feel like the fretboard was dark enough so I ended up ordering some ebony wood stain. As you can see from this photo I used it on the fretboard to dye the wood to be even darker. It felt a bit crazy to be taking sandpaper to the fretboard of a £3,000 guitar but it ended up working really well. Here's a comparison of before and after. As you can see, it's a lot darker and I think it looks much nicer. Back to the rest of the video. Then I also polished the guitar. Even though it's a new guitar, it had been sat in a shop for a bit and you never know whose grubby fingers have been all over it. So I also made sure to give it a nice polish so that it was perfectly clean. In terms of specs, it's a Sitka spruce top with a walnut back and sides. The neck is made of mahogany and the fingerboard is made of walnut. It's got 20 standard frets. It's finished in nitrocellulose and the color is called Walnut Burst. This is the hard shell case that it comes in. It's black on the inside and the out, and the buckles are a much more modern style than other Gibson cases that I've had in the past. As well as the guitar itself, in the case you get the warranty details, and this also has the inspection tick list on it. Inside the neck pocket you get some extra stuff as well. There's a plastic bag in it with some Gibson goodies. You get a Gibson branded polishing cloth. You also get a screw for the strap button on the neck, which isn't installed by default. The truss rod adjusting tool, and also a Gibson branded keyring holder for guitar picks. There's also the keys to the case in a small paper envelope, and they've also included one of the Daddario hydration pack systems. I also separately purchased an official Gibson blank truss rod cover. I don't really like the ones that say studio on them, so I got rid of that. And once that was installed, the guitar was good to go. If you're a subscriber or you've just watched a few of my videos, it's probably no secret that I'm a really big Oasis fan. Most of my recent guitar purchases, like my Gibson ES-335, was directly inspired by the fact that Noel Gallagher plays them. I have quite a few electric guitars now, but the only acoustic guitar that I've had for years was my Taylor GS Mini. I've played it in a few videos, it's a really nice guitar, and the thing that I like about it is it's really small, because I'm only 5'7", so it's quite a comfortable guitar for me to be able to play, because it's got a smaller body. However, the more I watched videos of Noel playing, both live and behind the scenes videos and stuff, the more I realised I really liked the sound of his guitar. The specific model of his is an SJ150, it's kind of a hybrid between an SJ100 and an SJ200. And Gibson don't really make them anymore. They recently did a very limited custom shop run of about 200 of his specific artist signature model guitars. But unfortunately, as well as being very limited, those guitars came with a five figure price tag, so it wasn't really something that I considered buying. And then recently when I started getting the bug again, I started looking at the price of a normal SJ200. The top of the line SJ200 comes in at about £5,000, which again I think is quite a lot of money, especially because I play acoustic less than electric. And then as I was browsing I realised that Gibson do studio versions of the SJ200 as well. This guitar actually really suits what I was looking for because the studio versions don't have binding or anything that makes the full fat SJ200s a bit more flashy and expensive. Noel's SJ150 signature model doesn't have any binding either, so this was actually quite close to what I was looking for. I paid about £2,800 for this guitar, so it's strange to describe it as a studio guitar, which is Gibson's kind of lower end, more affordable versions, because it actually costs more than my Les Paul standard. The thing that I really like about this guitar, even though it's a studio version, is that although you're paying less for it, you get pretty much all the features of the higher end guitars as well. The main differences that I could see were just cosmetic ones, like you don't get the binding on the neck or the headstock. The standard versions of the SJ200 also have the finish on the back and sides and the back of the neck, whereas this is just a clear coat of nitro. With other Gibson Studio versions like the Les Paul Studios, you get cheaper pickups and cheaper electronics and stuff, which to my ear do sound quite a bit different. Specs wise, the difference in wood is you get a maple top, but this one has a walnut back and sides, whereas the full fat SJ200s are maple all over, I believe. Still a mahogany neck. You get Grover style tuners instead of the vintage style Cluson ones, although I've got some other Gibson tuners that I'm going to swap out and put on this anyway. And then the pickup inside the guitar is the LR Bags pickup, although it's a slightly cheaper model than the standard version of this guitar. I've had it for a couple of weeks now and I've been playing it between when it arrived and recording this video. You might have seen the cover that I did of Champagne Supernova, which very heavily featured this guitar, obviously. If you haven't, here's a quick demo of how it sounds. Wake up the dawn and ask her why a dream, a dream, she never dies Wipe that tear away now from your eye I think it fit the part perfectly. It sounds very similar to Noel's guitar, which is exactly what I was after. 
the big body just gives it so much bass end that my Taylor GS Mini didn't have. I think it's fantastic and it makes for a really great recording guitar. So now to wrap up the video, I'm just gonna do some strumming and show you how it sounds. <laughs> 